Hello, hello, it's Sonny Melendrez, and perhaps it is not by accident that you have found the positive side of the radio spectrum. This is the Sonny Melendrez Show, and each week we strive to bring you entertainment and inspiration through storytelling, fascinating guests, exclusive celebrity interviews, and it's all brought to you with a heavy dose of of enthusiasm. Now, as always, I am thrilled to introduce you to my very special guest. So let's get on with the show. Sunny Radio, SunnyRadio.com. Well, my guest today is a loving mother, a world traveler, a number one New York Times best-selling author, and an inspiring witness to everyone she meets. She has written 19 books and counting, and her book, E Squared, has been translated and sold in countries around the world. She is also the author of my current favorite, Thank and Grow Rich. What a treat it is to have Pam Grout on the show. Pam, you're here. Hey, I am so glad to be here. Oh, same here. My goodness. I feel like I know you, uh, having read uh, your books, and I uh, started, of course, with uh, with E squared, and uh, then uh, graduated to E cubed, and now I'm uh, uh, in the middle of uh, Thank and Grow Rich, title which I love. Would you say you've lived this joyous um, existence all your life and then just got validation at a certain point? Um, well, that's an interesting question. I feel like on one hand, I've always known about the joyous life that was possible, and I think my life has been pretty joyous. I think there have been points in my life where I, you know, chose to tune into a different frequency. I talk a lot about, you know, frequency and the joy frequency, the gratitude frequency. So I think I've always pretty much known about it, and I've always experienced it sometimes. But now I'm more committed to it on a regular 24-7 basis. Sure, so sure. I, I would say, yes, I've always known about it, but I would say there have been periods in my life where, no, I probably didn't, um, you know, let it in as much yeah. as possible. Well, you know, we're human. And again, right. That's one of the things that you uh, you talk about is is breaking out of that, uh, of that kind of a mindset. Um, and, you know, you talked about Course in Miracles. I started at, boy, I don't even remember, kind of a long time ago. I read um, Gerald Jampolsky's book, Love is Letting Go of Fear, probably when I was still in my 20s. So I've been following it more or less for a really long time, probably 30 years, something like that. Yeah. So let's start out with uh, your field of potentiality. Explain that for somebody who's never heard that term and also how you came up with it. You know, there's a quantum... Um, mechanics term called the field. So I just thought, well, the field of infinite potentiality where anything is possible. And then of course we choose which superposition or which wave collapse, you know, in quantum wave, quantum mechanic terms. But um, so field of infinite potentiality just really works for me because it's like all the waves and all the possibilities that are out there in the world. And and a lot of this is science-based, isn't it? Well, it is, you know, in fact, my book, E Squared, that was kind of the big one that it was actually my 16th book, but, you know, it's the one that made, you know, 40 languages and number one New York Times bestseller. Mm. But um, uh, Now, what was your question again? Now I've forgotten. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> because it was set up like experiments um, to where I literally, let's use the scientific method. You know, we've heard about these theories. We've known that our thoughts create a reality. You know, even back in the Bible, it says, ask and ye shall receive. So this is not something new, but what I did is I posted in terms of let's actually test it out. So I set it up with the scientific method where, you know, you actually pose a hypothesis and then you test it and you give yourself 48 hours to see, is this true? Are these things they're saying, is there really this force out there that wants to bless me? Is it really true that, you know, my thoughts are replicated in in material form. So let's don't just take this for granted. Let's really test it out. And I think what happens is when you see it with your own two eyes and when you set up these time frames like this, you actually do see it and it instills all kinds of new faith. Because like before we were supposed to just take it on faith. But it's like, no, you can actually prove this. This stuff really does work. <laughs> it, it certainly does. And you know, it, it's funny because some people will tell you, well, if you're looking for something like that, then it's going to, like, let's say uh, you're looking for a, a purple cat cow. Uh, and, uh, and, and all of a sudden you, you see a, a truck go by that has a purple cow and a logo. Uh, and you, you say, well, that, that's just a coincidence. What do you say to people like that? 
Well, a lot of people will say that, but what I believe is that we are already connected to everything. You know, it's all big, one big field, again, field of infinite potentiality. So yes, we do animate into our life what we put our attention upon. So the fact that you said, I'd like to see a purple cow, then that purple cow that probably was already there becomes, it comes into your field of awareness. So that's kind of how it works because, you know, people talk a lot about manifesting. Well, I believe you're already connected to whatever it is you want, but you don't always recognize it because you're focused on something else. So again, I believe that um, it's not a coincidence. I believe that our thoughts do replicate themselves out there. And, um, and I think that's just one thing we can prove with this book. But no, I, I mean, you know, people can believe it's coincidence and that's fine, but it's like, there's this exciting potential thing you can use in your life. So why wouldn't you want to use it? You know, I mean, there's just no, there's no downside to this. <laughs> Not at all. You know? Yes, you're right. You know, it's funny because uh, I remember a Wayne Dyer saying something about this. It was on one of his PBS specials. And I know that, that Wayne is, uh, is also on your uh, top 10 list, being a, a Hay House former author himself. But he said that if you have this, this wonderful, joyous way of, of looking at life, and then you have this other side, which is cynical, why would you not choose this? And, I know. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, it's like going into an ice cream shop and, and asking for, uh, for prunes or something. You know, it's, 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 it's amazing. And do you find that sometimes it's hard to convince others about this or do you just kind of put it out there? Well, you know, I don't really want to convince people or I don't really think it's my mission to convince people. What I really, I want people to look at me and go, I want what she's having. <laughs> you know, yes. like people see that, you know, what, what do you have? How, how do all these great things keep happening to you? So people start wondering, but I'm never going to be one that's going to get up on a soapbox and say, you should do this. In fact, that's what I say in the book E squared is look, here's an experiment. Don't take my word for it. You know, try it for yourself. So that's the whole idea. So, you know, I, I don't feel at all invested whether anybody believes this or not. I want to offer this. This is this great, amazing thing that you could be using in your life. And in fact, the truth is you're using it all the time, but why not use it in a more conscious way? Why not focus instead on, you know, what would bring you joy? What would bring you happiness instead of focusing on the things you think are, you know, whatever it is, it can be temporary. You know, it's temporary unless you continue to stare at it and focus on it forever and ever, like a lot of people choose to do. And you've had a lot of people who have actually, uh, you know, tried those experiments and then uh, emailed you and you've, you've incorporated a lot of their, uh, uh, a lot of their findings in your book. Oh, it's been so much fun. I mean, that's been the great thing about this book. I mean, getting on the, you know, getting a number one New York Times bestseller is like a great thing for any author, but it's just been so much fun to connect with people and my, all these emails that I get from people, they usually start with something like this. You are never going to believe this. <laughs> and I say, well, of course, I, I do believe this. In fact, I call them, well, the stories in EQ because it's like, well, duh, I've always known that this kind of stuff works. So yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun to connect to people and just, you know, introduce people to this, you know, incredible power that they have within themselves. Absolutely. And you also, you actually, uh, you know, use that uh, when you first wrote the book, which was actually another title and it had it just sitting there, right? Right. Well, I'd done the book, um, pretty much the exact same book. It was called God Doesn't Have Bad Hair Days. And in that book, I had 10 experiments. This one has nine. And I did change up one of the experiments. But, um, you know, it was basically the exact same book, but it went out of print maybe like a year after it came out. It didn't do anything. But I always loved that book. And so, you know, I decided I'm just going to pump up my joy channels. I started doing the practice that I talk about in um, Thank and Gretchen about my AA 2.0 program about, you know, looking for gratitude and, um, you know, really being grateful. And I feel like really the reason this book did so well, partly because it was with Hay House, but also because I think I pumped up my gratitude uh, frequency. You know, I started becoming happier and, um, you know, looking for more of those kind of things and expecting those kind of things. So of course that's going to happen. And I also, this is a fun story I told. If you've read the book, you've heard it, but I'll tell it for your listeners on the night or on the, the New Year's Eve before E squared came out, it came out in uh, January of 2013. I was in Savannah, Georgia, and I was at a beach with my sister. And so I took a big stick and I wrote this affirmation in the sand. It said, 
E squared will be an international bestseller. And I wrote it in you know, big letters in the sand. And I just let you know the waves come in and take it out into the universe. And indeed, that's exactly what happened. So that's kind of a fun story. No, I believe that. I believe yeah. it. Because everything is an affirmation. And you know, you, you have so many uh, wonderful ways of doing that. And with uh, Thank and Grow Rich, you've taken it to a whole other level that goes beyond what you're you're, you know, there are so many books about gratitude uh, and journals and everything else, but you take it to a, to a point where, uh, I'll just give you an example. You, you said, and this is something that I've done for, since I started reading the book, is every morning I write out something amazingly awesome is happening to me today. And then I literally write one, two, three, and list three things that I am grateful for. And so, all of a sudden I'm coming from a, a place of gratitude as, as, a, as opposed to a place of want. Does that describe it? Yeah, no. And in fact, one other thing that's kind of key in putting into that practice that I do is each day, those three things, and I actually text them to what I call my possibility posse. Hmm. And it has to be something different because, you know, a lot of gratitude practice. Oh yes, I'm grateful. I got a good night's sleep. I'm grateful that, you know, I have breakfast, whatever, but th it has to be something every day. So yeah. I always say that I feel like I'm like, you know, Lewis and Clark out there scouting for blessings because I have to report back to my little possibility posse. <laughs> you know, some new blessing that happened to me. I cannot do a repeat. So that really is what I said, the practice that kind of changed everything because it's like, wow, that's where my focus is. I am out there looking for those blessings, noticing those things that have always been there, but that sometimes, you know, we get into these grumpy frequencies, grumpy frequencies, and we don't even see them. I tell the story in, um, he squared about this friend of mine, she was at the airport and this woman was, you know, waiting for the bus to take her back to the, to her car and she was you know carrying all these big suitcases and she was just in a foul mood and she says where is that bus the bus won't come that bus literally my friend said passed two times right in front of her but she was so invested in this sad story about how this bus wasn't being there she couldn't even see the bus mm. and that is like a remarkable story in fact there's been a lot of scientific experiments and they say you know, they've done where people, you know, they're kind of in a happier frequency or they, you know, people that are in better moods, they tend to, um, when, if they're reading something, they tend to take in more of the actual thing. It's like their brain is better able to notice things. So it really does affect your brain when you're, you know, in a more happy space, I guess. <laughs> so what would you say to somebody who says, well, I don't know how to get out of that happy space. I, I'm very, very depressed. I, I just feel down on my, I feel worthless. I feel like I, there's no reason for me to live. You know, they have all these negative things about themselves. How do they pull themselves out of that hole? Well, you know, first of all, I always say there's two magic words, and that is to say it's okay, because I think what happens is we feel like we're in a certain space, and then we judge ourselves for being in that certain space. So first of all, you have to employ the magic words. It's okay to feel that way. And then just as an experiment, just try affirming. Like I said, this AA 2.0 program, it takes literally five minutes, and I think anybody can afford five minutes in the morning. And again, just start your day, even if you have to say it through gritted teeth something amazingly awesome is going to happen to me today. I mean, say it, you know, <laughs> however you want to just say it, you know, that's making an affirmation. That's how you want your day to start. Yeah. And then you start listing blessings. And again, try doing three different ones each day and just try that. You know, um, I talk about a woman who wrote a book. She, I mean, she, it was amazing all the things that happened to her. She has had a trouble with, she was drinking too much, drinking too much. She was, um, you know, they're having trouble financially. There's a lot of things that weren't going right in her life. And so she, she started what she called a gratitude jar. And every night before she and her son would go to bed, they'd put in like, you know, gratitudes that night into their little jar. And um, her life completely turned around. So some real simple practice just to do it, even if you don't feel like it, even if you're convinced it's a bunch of bull, bull, just go ahead and do it anyway and just give it a try and see what happens. I agree. I agree. And that's the amazing thing about it is that uh, your mind doesn't know or your subconscious doesn't know um, wh wh whether you're speaking the truth or not, whether you believe it or not. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Here's another thing that I like to tell just try, you know, making your mouth go into a smile. <laughs> Even that can make you feel a little bit better. Or try instead of walking into the bathroom, try dancing into the bathroom. I mean, you know, like 
there's all this muscle memory that, that we have that's kind of used to being in a bad mood. But if you just try to do a few different body things, that can also make a big difference. I agree. All right. I'm curious, what was Pam Grout like as a child? Well, I was one of these little brainy kids that loved school. And um, I lived in a neighborhood with a lot of um, boys. So I was a real tomboy. I played a lot of we play this game called Frozen Indy, and I guess that wouldn't be very politically correct anymore, but it's kind of like freeze tag, only we had teams, and we played that all the time. We did high jump. So I was just outside playing a lot. I grew up in a small town. My father was the Methodist minister. My mom was a teacher. So, um, you know, I just kind of had a fun outdoor type childhood, I guess you could say. <laughs> but I was someone that really liked school a lot. You know, I took my projects quite seriously in school and I loved doing them. my art projects. I, you know, I do 10 times more than everybody else just because for me it was fun. I always liked, you know, going gung ho on everything. <laughs> and your parents? And were they optimistic? Yeah, my dad definitely was. You know, again, he was a minister and he did have, you know, I learned some of that baggage around the D word, but but he was always a real positive guy. In fact, I think you're from Texas. My dad grew up in Texas and today happens to be his birthday. He actually passed oh. last year, but today is my dad, would have been my dad's 85th birthday. Oh, God bless him. Well, I'm sure he's smiling down on you and uh, just uh, enjoying all of your uh, all of your success. Okay, so, so for somebody who just just heard the name Pam Grout in the last 20 minutes, let's give them an experiment they can try. Well, I love the first one. I mean, well, there's a couple that I think are really fun. The Albie Einstein experiment, and that's something you could look up on YouTube because a lot of people have posted videos about it. But that one requires equipment. So what I, I guess the first one's probably good. I call it the do to bides experiment. And I just ask people say, okay, if this really true, if this crazy Pam Grout girl says there really is this force that wants to bless me and interact with me, give it 48 hours to give me a sign that that is indeed true. You know, why should I have to take this on faith? I want a sign. So just write down the time, you know, whatever time it happens to be. And just say, okay, send me, send me a sign, send me a blessing, and just see what happens. And again, the stories that people have told me have been just remarkable of the things that happened when they did that, including sometimes people that say, oh, it didn't work for me. And then, you know, like three days later, they'll have this amazing, remarkable thing that happens. And so I just say, you know, you have to get on that frequency where you can see it. But it, it does always happen. I mean, as soon as you make a request for that, you will definitely see it. And I think we're kind of taught, like, again, going back to the church that, oh, you don't want to ask too much. You know, you don't want to ask God for that. He's too busy. Sure. Anyway, well, so just ask for a blessing. Just say, hey, look, if you're really out there and you really do have my best interest at heart, show me a sign. And then just ask to be, you know, be, be open enough that you can see it. There's no because question those about signs that. signs are there, but people may not be open enough to see it. But if, if they can open their, just, just, you know, give it a try. Give it 48 hours. You also wrote something that says, even though we believe our vision is like a camera, simply recording in real time uh, all the shapes, objects, and the motions we see, the truth is the brain's 130 million photoceptors are joined by billions of neurons that construct what we see. Right. So I, well, I, I call it, we have like um, neural pathway malfunctions. <laughs> because, you know, we all set up these neural pathways. There's, you know, all those many, many possible connections in our brain. And then we start, um, you know, joining this with this, and this means this, and this, with that. and then pretty soon we have these highways set up in our brain to where we really can't see anything else. In fact, the neural pathways in each of our brains are completely different. I mean, they, they are looking at, at completely different things. It's like the map, like looking at a map of, you know, Peoria, Illinois, and Chicago, or farther away, I guess, Hong Kong, you know, they'd be completely different. And that's kind of how our neural pathways get set up. But the good news is we can change our neural pathways, we can um, reconfigure them. And that's what gratitude is really good at doing is reconfiguring those neural pathways, those highways that have been set up in our brain to notice certain things and to, you know, pick out certain things. Well, here's what I don't understand. If, if what we see, like, let's say a tree, um, and it, the tree is actually created by uh, our vision of it, our, um, just the, the whole makeup, and this is, of course, uh, you know, through scientific uh, uh, quantum physics, we, we actually create that tree. Why wouldn't that tree look different to every single person? Well, how do we know it doesn't? 
I mean, I always think, did you ever see that Facebook meme that was going around for a while where did the dress look yellow or gray or whatever that was? And people literally saw it completely different. And so it's really impossible for me to know how you're seeing a tree. But I think, the, you know, the material world that we see, according to, you know, people that study these things, it's like we see something that's like the icon on our computer. Like we don't look at the little icon for, you know, iTunes and think, oh, there's a gazillion songs in that little um, icon and that's kind of what we're seeing out there in the physical world is basically an icon that represents you know these certain things that we see but in reality it's mostly empty space and it's all these waves so um, to make sense of things our brain set up these little you know I guess shortcuts little hacks so we can see the world a certain way would you say that uh, the children are at an advantage uh, over us or we were at an advantage when we were children uh, as far as the way we saw the world and the way we, you know, the, the joy that we had? Oh, I think so for sure. You know, kids know that they can imagine anything and, and become that. I mean, you don't set a kid down in front of a pail of Legos and they'll go, nope, not feeling it today. I mean, you know, kids are just <laughs> alive and they're just going to, you know, give them some watercolors and they can create anything and they know they can be anything before they picked up all the rules, you know, the rules that, you know, adults learn. So I think kids have a real advantage. In fact, I was just reading an article this morning about um, they were teaching some kids to meditate and how kids were so good at meditating because, again, they, their minds aren't quite as distracted as we adults. But no, I think kids have a definite advantage. In fact, um, I think, um, you know, we as adults really need to learn from our children as opposed to thinking that we, you know, have things to teach them. Absolutely. And as well as nature and, and, and animals, pets especially. Right, right. There's so much, you know, buzzing energy all over in everything, including those trees we were talking about, including everything. And, you know, <laughs> it all has information to show us and teach us. Isn't it incredible how a tree, when, when, you, when you have this way of thinking, all of a sudden you look at a tree and it's like this miracle. Uh, and, and you see all these these uh these lessons that come from the branches the leaves the the uh you know what happens when it gets watered when it doesn't it, isn't it amazing how the correlation between what happens in nature uh has answers for what we're looking for in life oh it is it's so amazing in fact i have one of the experiments in eq was the nature versus the news and i think that um you know nature has a whole lot to teach us if we are willing to listen like george washington carver you know that invented all those things those uses for peanut you know and he had you know he was a phd and of course he had all the scientific credentials but he said that all those inventions that he made he would go out and walk in the morning and literally nature um, you know, this field of infinite potentiality would literally tell him the formulas for these inventions. And he, you know, he was knighted by the Queen of England and, you know, was a great hero, saved the South, they say, you know, with um, when the cotton crops. Um, but anyway, but, but it wasn't, it wasn't science, it was nature that actually told him all those things. So I think that's kind of a cool thing to be open to is, is the lessons that we can learn from nature, from the natural world. Absolutely. So what's next for Pam Grout? Are you you're working on another book? Yeah, I've got a book coming out um, in, in 2020. And um, it's a Course in Miracles book. And it's where what happened is I started blogging at the beginning of 2018 about my journey through the Course in Miracles that I do every year. I mean, supposedly you do it one year and then you're done. But I, I guess I'm a slow learner. So I start again you know, over every, every year again. So I was just blogging about that. And people started writing to me and saying, oh, you need to turn this into a book. You make it so much fun. Because you know, Course in Miracles, it's got a lot of words. And a lot of people think, oh, it's hard to get through. You know, it's hard to understand it. And so I was just talking about you know, how I saw each of the lessons and people just really seem to respond to it. And, you know, when, when you hear it, you know, like 20 times something when somebody tells you something, you know, that's, that's kind of clear guidance. <laughs> so it's like, okay, I think I'll turn it into a book. So that's exactly how it happened. And it does come out in 2020. And again, it's kind of fun because it will be my 20th book. So there's, you know, the two, two, two thing. Perfect. Perfect. Well, Pam, I am so thrilled that I finally connected with you, uh, got to share you with my audience, and I hope that you'll come back again soon. I would love to. Thank you so much, Sonny. Thank you, and God bless you. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, that's my visit with best-selling author Pam Grout. 
You can get links to all of Pam's books, including her website, her Facebook page, and more at sunnyradio.com slash show. That's sunnyradio.com slash show. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe to my podcast so you don't miss a single episode and join people from over 20 countries around the world. Until next time, I'm Sonny Melendrez, and I leave you with this challenge from Pam Grout. Today, make a list of all the ridiculously beautiful things you already have. Bye-bye. <laughs>